Okay, good evening and welcome to the Village of Wackingers Falls monthly regular meeting of the Mayor and the Board of Trustees for today, Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. Uh, I would like to ask that we say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And at this time, I'd like to ask that we take a moment of silence for Mr. Stu Stiegel, a uh, beloved uh, member of the Wappingers Falls Village family. Uh, Stu Stiegel was a very special man who, um, if you got to know him, you had to love him. He uh, always had a good story. He was a great volunteer. I'm going to let Scott Davis, his neighbor from across the street, uh, talk a little bit about him uh, after this moment of silence. Uh, Mr. Stiegel passed away recently. Okay, thank you, Scott. Trustee. So, Dick. I had the distinct privilege of living across the street from Stu for and Jackie for many, many years. Um, I know that, uh, and I, I remember a lot about Stu. We used to have share some great stories together. And um, Stu was an inspector in the Navy, and um, when he went onto the ships to inspect or onto a submarine to inspect, he didn't take any garbage from anybody. And um, when he went on board the ship to inspect, he didn't have, rank didn't have a matter. And, and I know that Stu uh, loved to tell that story about how tough he was when he went through his inspections and how much it meant to him. Um, Stu was a Boy Scout leader in the community, um, well known for his work with the Boy Scouts, uh, Power Squadron, they were involved, him and Jackie were involved with Power Squadron for many years. And um, he was just a great neighbor, but really, really good to talk to. He had many, many a good story to tell. And um, he was, him and Jackie were really good people. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Uh, so at this time, is there any recognition announcements or special events that we have, John? I have one announcement that I would like to make with respect to next Tuesday, September 15th, Village Election Day. Polls open at 10 o'clock in the morning, close at nine. There's one contested race in the second ward. Uh, I would encourage those who come, bring your own pen. We will have pens, but if you have your own pen, bring that. Certainly bring a mask with you. We will have all precautions out there. I have one person designated to ensure everything goes smoothly with respect to COVID-19 precautions. Again, that will be next Tuesday here at the courtroom, 26 or 2582 South Avenue at 10 a.m. Polls open. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, any other announcements, special events, or recognition? Uh, this Friday at 6.30, uh, there will be a 9-11 memorial service at Mazir Park. Uh, we're going to live stream it on Facebook uh, also. Um, there will be uh, social distancing and masks required at this event. Uh, the masks aren't required if you are properly distanced. Correction on that, Mayor, six o'clock. Six o'clock, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, also next Friday at six o'clock, at the POW MIA Park, 
uh, we are going to be, commem be uh, commemorating National POW MIA Day at Joseph McDonald's Memorial, the POW MIA Memorial at the POW MIA Park, uh, which is one of the, if not the first, it's one of the first POW MIA parks in the nation at the corner of Route 9 and East Main Street. Um, this is a special event that is attended by members of Joseph McDonald's family. It's attended by village residents uh, who have both have and were friends with POWs or MIAs. It is also uh, hosted by continuously since for about 35 years, the uh, Rolling Thunder group who uh, make sure that we always remember the uh, POWs and the MIAs. There's a missing man ceremony and there's a chance for village residents to speak uh, about their loved, one, loved ones or uh, just POW MIAs in general. So we invite you to attend that as well. Um, I will also tell you that uh, the park at Franny Reese is um, nearing completion. It's not yet complete. It will remain closed while the contractor has uh, control over the site. So the contractor is not done with some uh, key elements of the park, which are uh, safe, which uh, are safety issues in nature. And uh, we won't be opening up the parking lot until those issues are taken care of. Uh, but things are going pretty smoothly. We were there this morning uh, setting up the um, new park benches, which look great. I think they've been bolted into the ground already. There should be a flag going up. Um, the uh, There will be railings put up going down the stairs to the uh, bottom portion of the property. And um, we hope that this park can be opened up towards the end of the month. And I'll be giving you more information about that. It looks like right now we're targeting the first weekend in October as being the date of the opening, but uh, we'll give you more information about that on our Facebook page uh, or in the paper as we get closer to the contractor actually leaving the site. So uh, one other item that I have to announce and tell you about is that on se Tuesday, September 1st, uh, before noon, uh, there was a, uh, an accident at the location where the West Main Street sidewalk projects are happening. And uh, Central Hudson had gotten a DOT permit to complete some work on a gas main. Uh, project that was underneath the sidewalk when our contractor uh, had uh, struck the, the gas main that was there because it was too shallow at that location. Uh, let us know that that was a 1926 gas main that goes underneath there and um, they got out there quickly and uh, started to work on it and decided at first that they were going to do uh, short uh, installation and then it ended up being a 450 foot installation that they were proposing. Uh, they got up past Mount Carmel and um, they had, uh, they were using a heavy piece of equipment, uh, which was too much for the retaining wall and it pushed over the retaining wall at uh, that location. So we're not yet sure what the extent of the damage is and what uh, kind of uh, means will be need to be taken to rectify the situation. It's being looked at now uh, by village, state, and central Hudson engineers, and uh, we will move forward. I will let you know that I have made a phone call to uh, Senator Sue Serino's office and gotten their assistance in this matter. And they have indicated that they will do everything in their power to help us through this situation. It is very likely that the sidewalk in front of Mount Carmel 
and Gallucci Park will uh, end up not being replaced at all at that location. It's very likely. I'm telling you things that you can use in your planning now that haven't actually uh, been uh, laid out in a uh, plan, but I'm, I'm telling you these things because they are very likely not certain, but it's very likely that the sidewalk uh, for that section that is in front of Mount Carmel and Gallucci Park will not be replaced until the spring of 2021. If that is the case, it is likely that the parking spaces across the street from that location along West Main Street will be closed to parking and will end up as a travel lane while the state and Central Hudson determine what is necessary to uh, get that site uh, rectified. Um, in the event that uh, there might be a claim for our issue, uh, we would uh, we have prepared our insurance company by making the, putting them on notice. So uh, that's really all the information I have about this right now, and I will uh, be giving you more information it is, as it is made available to the village. Um, okay. So that's it with the announcements, recognition, and special events, unless anybody else has anything to add. Okay, so I'd like to ask John Carge, our clerk, if he would do the roll call. Mayor Alexander. Here. Trustee Marka John. Absent. Trustee Davis. Here. Trustee Kamornik. Here. Trustee Huber. You. Trustee Panessa. Here. Trustee Lamars. Here. Village Attorney Wallace. Here. Okay, and so let the record show that Trustee Huber is here. Uh, I, I didn't hear him. I'm not sure if the, bit, the audio came out for him. Okay. Yes. Okay, so you're here. Good. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I have confirmed with the village attorney that tonight's meeting has been convened in accordance with the governor's March 13th, 2020 executive order 202.1 and all superseding orders, which suspends certain provisions of the open meetings law to allow a municipal board to convene a meeting via video conferencing. In accordance with the executive order, the public has been provided with the ability to view tonight's work session meeting and a transcript will be provided at a later date. I've done a roll call of the board members and there is a quorum present for this meeting. I've also confirmed with the village clerk that this meeting has been duly noticed. We have fulfilled our legal notice requirements by posting notice on the village's Facebook page, faxing it to news organizations and putting notice on the village's homepage of its website. And uh, at this time, I would like to ask if we could have a motion to approve the August 12th and August 26th meeting minutes. I'll make it. Second? I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, could I have a motion from the Finance Committee to authorize to pay bills as per approved warrants? I'll make it. Second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Huber. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, um, so last month, we had a motion by Trustee Panessa to adjourn the public hearing resolution number 342020 of 2020 to today. Um, it was seconded by Trustee Lammers and it carried. So I'm going to turn this over to the. Uh, do we need to reopen the meeting? Greg? Uh, no, at this time, no, because uh, I just talked to Brian um, before the meeting uh, today and. Um, 
uh, we just he don't, we don't have enough information to give to the village board right now to continue with the public hearing. Um, you'll recall that the resolution to cut the weeds and grass and, and all the debris passed and that work still has to be done. And until that work is done, we don't have enough information to assess the structural damage that is the subject matter of the resolution before you in the public hearing. So uh, I'm going to ask the board to continue the, adjourn this public hearing. Uh, Brian, do you have a, a date in mind that you, you think probably uh, the next meeting in October, at least? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe the, the first actual village board meeting in October, which will give us a little bit of time. We have to find a contractor that's going to go in and clean this up, and I, I haven't had the time to, to do it yet. Yeah. So that well, let's put it over. Let's put the public hearing over for the first meeting um, of the October uh, month, and um, you know we'll, it will either go forward or it will be a control date. That's we have happens. a can we have a motion to adjourn to October fourteenth? I have a motion. So motion by Trustee Lammer, second. I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Panessa. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, motion passes. So that passed. Okay, so the next item on the agenda, I think, is the hearing of 48 Trabucco, an order to remedy for 114.6F. Is that correct? John? Uh, yes, Mayor and Board. At the last meeting, Trustee Huber made a motion to adjourn the public hearing to 9 9 today, seconded by Trustee Panessa. They were waiting for more information at the last meeting. I don't know if Brian got any more information. Okay, uh, Craig or Brian, do you want to start us off with this? Brian, I'll defer to you. Okay. I, I have not heard from the owner of the property about any attempt whatsoever to take care of the violation. So I, I would ask the board to um, at, at the next meeting pass a resolution to go onto the property and cut all the bushes and obnoxious, not all the bushes, obnoxious growth, overgrown weeds and, uh, and tall grass um, is what I would ask. So has this property owner been uh, ordered to appear before the village board to contest yeah. this? Yeah, I think we uh, actually had a public hearing last month on this, right, right Brian? Correct, yes, absolutely. And, and pictures were introduced? Yes. Okay. Um, I think what we'll need to do though is, since that public hearing was continued to today, let's adjourn it so that you can provide a cost analysis to the, to the Board of Trustees and they can you know make an informed decision as to what as to what action to take at that point in time okay so the same contractor that you know maybe you can bring them by a tribuco and they can give us an estimate as to what needs to be done and and, and uh if the board so is so inclined to um outlay the money and put it on that person's taxes you know as a recruitment we can do so that are acceptable that, okay. it is to me yeah all right then we'd need a yep. motion from the board to yeah may i ask a question i just want to confirm uh the 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 property is currently is that correct the property is vacant i i'm sorry you broke up trust i'm sorry my my question was um the, the property in atribuca it's it's vacant there's no one living there Correct. To, to my knowledge, there's nobody. 
there has been nobody living here for quite a few years. Wow. Okay. The owner comes and comes and goes, but as far as I know, nobody resides there. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, so could I get a motion to adjourn this public hearing? I'll make it. Second? I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, there's a resolution on the agenda to approve the memorandum of agreement with the PBA. Um, I think I'd like to ask that we go into executive session with the uh, attorney about this matter. On, on there. Yep. I think I, I just want to go back to that prior vote. I think there might have been a, a, a nay vote. I just want it to be properly recorded. So can can you take the roll call? Okay, so we had a motion uh, made by Trustee Lammers and a second by Trustee Komornik. Is that yeah, right? No, the motion, the motion was by Trustee Komornik. Oh, okay. Seconded by Trustee Lammers to adjourn to October 14th. Okay, so we'll do a roll call vote. Trustee Komornik? Aye. Trustee Huber? Aye. Trustee Davis? Aye. Trustee Panessa? Aye. Trustee Lammers? Aye. And let the record show that Trustee Markajan is absent, and I will vote aye. Okay, uh, could we, uh, could I ask that we get a motion to suspend the rules so I can change the, um, the agenda because I'd like to talk about the memorandum of agreement with the PBA in executive session, come out of executive session and vote on that. So moved. I'll, I'll make a motion we go into executive session. Uh, suspend the rules and then uh, could I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, so uh, we have Corey Yusevich on the uh, Zoom call. If you would put yourself on video, Corey. Uh, and I'd like to ask if you could be able to take the uh, share the screen. Sure. Uh, if you've been given permission. One sec. So uh, what we're going to do here is this, this next item on the agenda is a discussion of the seven projects community import input uh, meeting that we had on August 16th, the video that we put out, the, um, the survey that was uh, online and the meeting with the September 3rd planning board uh, meeting. Uh, all those were places where we had public discussion and public input on the um, seven projects that were presented. Are you able to share the screen? I think so. Am I in? <clears throat> You're in. There it goes. This is on a little delay. Okay, so I came last week, or not last week, last meeting rather, and I talked about some of the results we had. Um, this is for, we had a public meeting on August 16th at the Methodist Church, where we presented a number of <clears throat> future projects we have planned. And then we also had a tour of the church. Some of you were there. And uh, we also had an online survey that people took. And so now that uh, we've closed the survey and everything, and we've obviously had the meeting, we've compiled all of the information and gotten our final results. And so this is just sort of a, just put this together this afternoon, uh, just to talk about the results of that meeting or of this meeting and the survey of what people liked and didn't like. And um, Matt also met with the planning board on September 3rd, and they discussed some of the results as well as giving their own feedback. 
to these projects. So I'm just going to bring you through real quick. Again, I presented some of this last meeting, but this is sort of our, our, our final headcount. We ended up having 62 people sign in at this meeting, which was an outstanding turnout. And then we had another 120 people take the survey online. So we got a lot of, lot of really good responses. Um, again, quick overview. <clears throat> These are the seven projects I'll be talking about. And we put the percentage of people who were interested in it. Um, the other percentage is left over of people who were either uninterested or just didn't answer that part of the survey or didn't talk um, about it on the boards. So we did that and then we have a few quotes on there and the quotes we picked were stemming from which ones we saw most often. So a lot of these quotes are there just because they said something that it appeared a lot of other people were saying as well. So we just want to get a, a overall grand scheme. And the first one is Goring Pavilion. Uh, if you recall, this was one of the concepts <clears throat> for what we think could go there. And it had a 87% interested rate, which was really good. It was our highest one. Um, one of the big problems someone brought up, as the second quote says, is what happens during the winter season? So as we move forward with that project, or as the private investor moves forward with that project, um, that'd be certainly something to consider. The Cobbler Building, which is up on Franerice, as Matt said, is uh, the park itself is just about done. Looks very nice. <clears throat> And for this, 85% were interested. We also had a lot of suggestions. Uh, the radio station was probably the most popular one. A visitor center was also really popular. Uh, there was a few ice cream shop recommendations, but for the most part, just about every quote says something about radio station or visitor center. Falls View Overlook. This one we gave a concept, as you see here, with multiple options. So for this, not only were 84% interested, but we also took a tally of which of those three options people were most interested in. And the stone one, as you can see, was 54%. Brick wasn't too far behind with 33, and then the wood was 13. So uh, as we prepare an RFQ for that, definitely gonna take that into consideration that stone was the most popular one. And uh, everyone really liked the overlook idea. But some of the suggestions were a restaurant, or some, you know, some sort of business. Um, a, a boutique hotel was another one people really enjoyed about how to use the actual building. Mary Ross Park, 83% interested in that. A lot of people enjoyed the idea to make use of the park, but people still brought up how, you know, I, I, the image there, I think there was a lot of concrete, so people wanted a little bit more green there, even if it is still used as an outdoor eating spot, just to add a bit more, um, bit more plants. The boathouse, 76% were interested in that. Everyone really liked, obviously, the boathouse aspect of it, as well as having it for event and art space. Um, of course, work on cleaning up the lake is a, a big topic people brought up, but uh, for the most part, people enjoyed the boathouse. Methodist Church was 75% interested. And this, again, they actually got to tour the church and we had little boards inside each room where people could talk about what they wanted to see there. Child care was a big one. And then an art center and community center, those were the three main main things. Art center, theater center was, was sort of one and all in the same. Um, and then this, this was a quote that we liked because it kind of encapsulates a bunch of ideas where using the sanctuary and house for income, whether it be a restaurant or a home, and then the classrooms being used as a community center. So uh, that, that was a really good quote. Mill Street parking lot. This had 72% interest. Um, of course, parking is something this village desperately needs, as the quote says, that we understand. But a big fear was not having it just be used for business parking and if apartments were to go on top for it to be parking, uh, you know, uh, residential parking. People wanted it to be public parking. Some even suggested having it metered parking to make money off of it. But 72%, uh, that was our lowest interest, but still having, you know, almost 
three quarters of the people who, who talked about it, interested in it is still really good. So a lot of the projects, a lot of positive feedback, which we really liked and a lot of recommendations that um, we're going to consider. So what's the next steps for these projects? Well, Goring Hall and the United Methodist Church, both private properties at the moment, um, they have to go for the planning board and go through, go through that process. Cobbler Shop and Boathouse, we're both uh, currently working on agreements for those two. Mary Ross and Mill Street Parking, we're going to continue to survey for it. Uh, again, those are, those are not immediate projects that are gonna happen. And seeing as some of the feedback we got, we definitely want to go back out and reach out to a lot more people. And then Fallsview, we're developing a request for qualifications for Fallsview Park with, um, with those concepts in mind and who voted on which one. So that's just sort of an overall view of, of all the projects that we presented and what people liked and didn't like and talked about. So we have a plan going forward of what we want to do with each of those properties. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get that, get that moving in 2021 and even late 2020. Okay, very good. That Thank is, you, Corey. That is it. Are there any questions from the board? Nope. Well, good job, Corey. Corey did put a lot of work into that and um, has been putting a lot of work. So we're very interested in uh, making this a very good, solid effort because Corey is going to take all this information and use it in the next round of the Downtown Revitalization Initiative grant request, which is the $10 million uh, grant that they give out to one community in the Mid-Hudson region. We're in one of the uh, most competitive places for that, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's uh, definitely within our reach. We've put in very competitive applications in the past and we've been encouraged to continue doing that uh, in the future. So um, this is something that I think uh, will be very useful to put in the application that this community has gotten together and has uh, had the opportunity to give input into these projects through a variety of methods and uh, has shown up to give input for this. So what I would like to ask the board is uh, if we could ask the attorney to start the process uh, the way Corey laid it out uh, there. And I'd also like to ask Corey to start to put together what we need to get the next uh, survey requests out. Um, just to give you some background, uh, we are interested in getting some more information about uh, people's input on the Mill Street property. Uh, and I think the uh, issue with the Mary Ross property is that there's a question as to uh, in what method would be the best method for the village and for um, the village residents for the property to be used in the future? Should it be, uh, what kind of agreement should it be and what should be the terms of the agreement? So uh, those are the uh, issues at hand for those two items. Um, so if there's no questions on this, I'd like to ask if we could get a motion to ask the attorney to take uh, the uh, next step in drafting the documents that are necessary to move us forward uh, as the community is given input and as the community is desired. So uh, that would mean that in the case of the, um, the agreement for the uh, cobbler shop that we move forward with uh, an agreement to uh, have that licensed out for private use uh, in a way that's best for the village. And uh, that would mean for the Falls View Park that we go through the steps necessary to get us to the place where we can put out a request for proposals. Um, the request for proposals would be uh, just the first step of the process. There would be a, um, a process where the community would get together and look at the results of those proposals. It would have the absolute right to reject all proposals. Uh, that, and that would be stated in the request for proposals. And it would have the absolute right to change 
uh, to, to ask that the developer who has the winningest proposal to change their proposal uh, so that it uh, can more meet the needs of village residents and the desires of the board. So, um, so Mayor, just so you know, just not to interrupt you, I apologize. Um, but I just want to, you know, let everybody know that this is a pretty involved process. But it, it, it there's a it's a ten step process that basically has to go through New York State Parks, and uh, there's going to have to ultimately be a, an act of the New York State Legislature at the end of the day, in um, you know allowing this to go forward. So those preceding steps uh, that I'll, I'll, I'll break down in a memo for everyone will kind of educate you as to the process that's involved. But um, it, it's, it's uh, something that, um, you know, is, is going to involve a public hearing, obviously. Um, and we're going to have to have a legislative sponsor, which uh, would be probably be Assemblyman uh, Karen Lawler, um, who would have to go and step up to the plate for us up in Albany. So we're gonna, you know, if you're going to consider this and we'll put together the best, uh, you know, the project in, in the best light possible um, for success. All right, Mayor. Okay, very good. So could I get a motion to move forward with our attorney working on those documents? I'll make it. Second. I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, very good. Uh, the next item on the agenda is, uh, so we are in need of an independent engineering study for um, a retaining wall, and that is the one that is located at Gallucci Park. And so I would like to get that done as soon as possible. And I, we're also in need of a, uh, for a grant purpose to get a dam uh, structure uh, person, engineering firm, and uh, it's likely that those uh, two engineering firms might be the same. It's, it's possible that they could be different. We would have the ability to choose two different engineering firms, but uh, I would like to get a, a motion to put out for a request for qualifications for an engineering firm to provide the study for the retaining wall and the dam structure uh, as stated here. Are there any questions? We can't use K-Sated. So, uh, so uh, Casey's uh, wheelhouse is not in uh, dams for this next section that has to be done. And they uh, also, we should get somebody independent of everybody for the analysis of the wall. So Casey is already the engineer for the DOT project that we're doing with the contractor that we have. Yes, I understand, but there are also village engineers too. And I, I guess I'm confused of why we got to get another one just for that one wall. If we we have an engineer. Yeah, so we're we're just looking for an independent third party to come in and look at things that hasn't already looked at things. Um, so it's, it's, it's possible that there might be, um, that, this, that this study might not be used just for uh, building purposes, but might be used in, um, in the courtroom or somewhere like that. So we want to have a uh, independent third party review ready. Okay. Uh Okay, so could I get a motion? I'll make it. Second? I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Davis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. John, would you talk to us about safety? Yeah, we... Uh... We did another inventory of our supplies and we have adequate supplies here at the moment for everything, including the, uh, the election. As far as building safety is concerned, I spoke with our rep in PERMA that some of you may recall, we had a very aggressive safety 
committee go around to all our facility buildings and remedy anything that we thought would be a hazard. And we took care of that 100%. And we're gonna start those inspections up again in October. I think that's it. Okay, very good. Thank you, John. Are there any questions for John? John, you want to, did you, you talked about the election. Did you talk about the enhanced procedures for the election next week? Uh, as far as? People that show up to vote and uh, what they're going to need to be doing as they, and what will, and the temperature. Yeah, and all that. yeah the, way, the way we have it set up right now is we have, six inspectors that we traditionally had, two per ward. We also have a seventh person this year who will be at the door, similar to a greeter, will take the temperature of the individual, make sure the individual has a mask. If the individual doesn't have a mask, we will provide one. We will also have at that station sanitizing material and we will have pens. If they don't have a pen, they can have one. We'll have a clean pen box and we'll have a recycled pen box that, our pen box that uh, that seventh person will clean continuously during the day. We are going to not have three privacy booths because of the size of the courtroom. We're gonna have one booth, which means one person can come in at a time, go through the process of making sure that they're an eligible voter give them a ballot, let them go to the privacy station, mark the ballot, come out, place it into the box, the ballot box, and exit the building. Right after that, the seventh person will go over to the privacy booth, wipe it down to ensure that it's clean. And we'll repeat that process throughout the day. Judging from the amount of absentee ballots I have so far, I would say that it's going to be a very low voter turnout this year because of COVID-19. And we've been going right along telling people that they could, even up until today, that they could process an absentee ballot if they wanted to. But of course, if they don't want to and they want to come out and vote, we're going to be there from 10 to 9 at night. The doors will close precisely at 9 so that the absentee ballots can be counted and marked into the book. I have veteran inspectors. They're all very good at it. Some of them even work for the county at times during presidential elections and state elections and so forth. So I've got a great team. They're all signed up. They're all aware of how we should keep distancing. The floor is marked with tape six foot apart. The sidewalk outside will be marked six feet and I will be there myself pretty much throughout the entire day to ensure that the safety precautions are adhered to. And of course, if anyone has any questions at all about it, uh, they can call me here at the Village Hall, 845-297-8773, extension five and I will get back with them if they have any questions at all. And again, I will be available the entire day up until the final ballot is counted. Okay, so election next week, Tuesday, September 15th from 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. at 2582 South Avenue. Um, and so, uh, Okay, very good. Thank you, John. Okay, next item up on the agenda is a, um, a report from the police commissioner. Uh, Mayor, there's a, we need a, an approval to hire a police officer. It's just above the committee reports. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. I don't have that, so I have an old agenda. So, um, Walter, you want to talk to us about that one? Uh, yes. Um, his name is John Reynolds. He's uh, presently employed by the uh, MTA police. 
Um, he's been there for uh, 18 years and he comes with a lot of experience and training, um, which would be very beneficial um, for, for our officers in the department. Um, he's a field training officer, which will help us a lot when we're doing our recruiting of new officers. Uh, we, don't, we have a couple of field training officers, but the more the better. Um, and I hope to like to step them at a different step than the usual starting for officers. I sent a memo to um, Scott about that. Yeah, and I haven't got a response back, but um, we can hire them contention upon the uh, attorney approval. That'd be great. Okay, uh, any discussion? Okay, could I get a motion? To we, wait, I have one. Are we hiring him just as part time? Yes, he's just a part time officer. He's a part time, yeah. Any questions? And his name is uh, Reynolds? Yes, John Reynolds. John Reynolds. So, could if there's no more discussion, could I get a motion to? Uh, hire John Reynolds as a part-time police officer. And is there a, a um, Yeah, I'll make a motion that we hire John Reynolds. And um, if it's reviewed by our um, attorney, we have uh, attorney Rich Zuckerman who handles, has been handling our police affairs the last couple of years. And um, there was a question about what step that we could put them because John has several uh, specialized, um, um, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna say degrees, but a specialized- uh, um, What's that? Qualifications. Qualifications. And um, so we're looking at possibly starting him at a higher step, but uh, that's in review. So upon review of the attorney, um, we can hire him. Okay, so uh, so I'd like to ask also if that would include the probation in the in the um, so there is there a six month probation? Yes, yeah, so he'd still be under the probation part of that. Yeah, so, same as so same as gonna, always. It's gonna the so steps. That, would go. You want to go up two steps? Uh, yeah, uh, step, step three, step four step is three. Yeah. Step three. So. And as uh, Walter said, he has several um, qualifications that help us in training and uh, some other things. So he, he would be a great asset to the department. Okay, very good. So um, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Trustee Lammers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Okay, and you can put me down as an I. All right, next item on the agenda, uh, the police report. Walter. Yeah, Mayor, do you have a post up there? Do you want me to share it? Yeah, if you could, because... Okay. Um, I couldn't get my copy to print out. Uh, Hold on. One second. All right, this might take a second. Um, you know, Mayor, if you don't, can't get it, um, I, got it. I think it should come up. I think it's there. Can you all see it? Yeah, you're good. If you can enlarge a little bit, then that would be great. If you can't, we'll have to squint. 
You're 52, 58-2. There you go. That's better. That's good. Okay. All right. So basically, um, there's a almost a doubling of traffic tickets. Uh, there's been a steady increase. Um, officers are back stopping more vehicles now. And you know, this month or last month, they wrote 130 tickets. Um, most everything else is pretty much the same. Um, Larcenes were down one. Um, accidents from down one, but. Basically, everything is pretty much the same. I don't know if you can go down a little further. We've added a new category, which the mayor wanted. A little bit further. A little bit further. Oh, uh, well, there it is. It's uh, it. You can't see it on there, but it's called a uh, use of force. Yeah. Um, anytime the off, we're going to have those filled in probably for the next meeting. I just want to check on a couple of incidents over the last couple of months, um, but we'll have that printed out that anytime officers use force during an arrest, um, we'll have that um, indicated in the uh, monthly report. That's a great addition. Good, uh, very good, thank you. And are there any questions from the board? Once again, great. I think you're doing a very good job. Very good job. Uh, Walter, I think you should talk about the um, the call outs uh, just to help us understand what the most of the reasons were for the call outs. Um, well, I think only this month we only had two sick call outs, which was good. Um, but sometimes this officers, you know, mainly if I said that's the only time we get call outs or, or we're running short on the shift where somebody we weren't able to fill the shift and we'll call out to see if somebody is available at that time. Um, but uh, we've been getting pretty much by with uh, covering all of our tours right now. And the three new people we brought on is helping a lot because they're in the schedule now. Good. And I just want to talk briefly about the um, Reform Act, uh, the one with working with the county. We had our meeting yesterday. Um, they're working on our use of force and um, deadly force policies. Um, they've hoped next week to have them all available for all agencies in the county that they've looked at. Um, they said most of them are pretty good. Um, a lot of them they've made indications where change has to be change has to come. Um, so I'll know more be better by next month on what those policies are. Um, I also posted on our um, our website, the police department's website, that uh, starting last about two weeks ago, but ours is uh, September 22nd. They're going to have a forum. Where you can call in and ask questions about this reform act, how it works, um, and uh, make suggestions for reforming the police or questions on why the police do something. And I, it's going to be posted on our site. I, I'll add it to the village site if you'd like. Um, it gives the date and time and how to make connections to be uh, uh, on the conference call. Okay, and uh, Walter is uh, talking about the Police Reform Act, which requires that we gather to, uh, together a group of citizens from various backgrounds. Um, so we're looking for a faith-based or nonprofit uh, representative. We're looking for uh, a person who is familiar with incarceration as a representative, a person who has had a uh, large amount uh, uh, is in a situation where they are coming into contact with our police a lot and um, also added to that. So we're gonna look for three to five people plus uh, there will be our village attorney, the commissioner and or the lieutenant and uh, the mayor and or a village trustee on that committee as well. Uh, we do wanna keep it into a group that's able to have meaningful discussion. So there is a desire to keep it into a uh, small enough group to allow for that. There will be uh, times when we will be asking the for public input in the appropriate forum. And so uh, we'll, that will be one of the next later steps of this. Uh, we've also uh, reached out to 
the uh, criminal justice program at Marist College. And uh, I've received two resumes from two individuals from that program uh, that are interested in working on uh, this police reform uh, act work that we have to do with the village of Wappingers Falls. So I'm gonna forward the, that information on to the commissioner and uh, we'll be discussing that for the next meeting. Uh, Mayor, yeah, I just have one intern that I just uh, hired, got from uh, SUNY New Poles, and he's in the process of uh, doing our survey, putting together a survey for the community that will be an annual survey. Um, that's one of the requirements by the Reform Act that they want that you should do surveys of your community. Good. Okay. Uh, so, were there any questions from the board? Um, on the monthly stat report, I see you have traffic tickets. Is there a possibility to do parking tickets too? Um, we normally do like winter enforcement, a lot of parking tickets on night parking. Um, the other parking, uh, like overtime parking, we usually don't enforce that unless we get complaints on the street or an area. Um, if they see any type of real bad violations like parked you know, the wrong way or parked in no parking zone, they do, they do write them. Uh, probably not as much as they do moving tickets. Um, I would just like to see going forward the parking ticket um, just as observation out there, driving around in the public, visiting a couple of people that live in the village. Um, I definitely think that some of the signs that we have, that two hour parking, that we're not enforcing. So I would like to start to see that happening. Okay, do you wanna add a category on this list? So. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, uh, any other questions? No. Okay, very good, thank you, Walter. Okay. Uh, the next report on the agenda is Highway, Trustee Huber. Kevin? Can you hear me now, Matt? Yes. Okay. Uh, the highway has been busy this month, like they always do. Uh, Monday pickup, those bus pickup is still going ongoing for Mondays. And uh, they have poured a little over 400 feet of sidewalk. Probably saw them on South and Zier and uh, Elm. I think he's got. Uh, yeah, South Avenue and Presbyterian Church, Elm Street. Uh, they, they're claiming brush up to the Spring Street dock. They've okay. been down by the lake. It's, he opened it up where uh, the boat ramp is, so it's nice and wide down there. You can see the lake. And uh, what's the guy here? I marked off a few things. Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Your connection. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. But, yeah. Just uh, could you go back about five lines? And start over a little bit. Where did I, where did I lose you at the uh, sidewalk part? At the uh, boat. The boat dock. Oh, the boat house. He had to uh, excavate out, excavate and install a new four-inch PVC sewer lateral connection for the old highway garage for the new bow house. There was, I guess, a problem down there with the plumbing. And uh, cleaned some brush and debris on Spring Street Docks. Did you hear that one? Did I Got the on that. Got that. Yep. And, uh, I can. Kevin, Kevin, yes. Ba yes. back to the boathouse and uh, the plumbing of the PCV piping. Um, wasn't that done already? He done it once before. This time he added the pipe because he had to dig out, the, dig it out for the gentleman so he can get in there. 
to add the pipe from the inside back a few months. Okay. So we had to pay for it twice? No, we had to pay for him to make the connection on the other side. So when the new contractor, what should have happened is we should have done this all at one time, but we did it at two different times. And that had more to do with the other contractor leaving the job early during the COVID. And also today he was uh, hanging the new uh, parking lot signs. Uh, I don't know if y'all have seen him yet on uh, Gold Star Way, Mill Street Parking, the parking lot off of uh, Reservoir. He's got to do the one up on Franny Reese when the park is, or that parking lot is turned over to the village at the end of August. And I think there's a couple, couple more I want to think. I think he's got to hang. But those signs are up today. They're on East Main Street, Mill Street. Reservoir, Gold Star Way. You see him going down to the village. They look nice. Good. Hey, any questions for Kevin? No, just a comment. Maybe Kevin could take it back to the highway. I, I was approached by a resident today that lives on Mazir, and okay. uh, she was uh, in front of her house and. Uh, trying to play beat the clock to have the stuff out there on Mondays when the guys picked everything up and she wasn't quite finished. The guys actually took the debris that she had in front of her house, took it away and then came back and actually helped her finish the remainder later. So great job by them. And uh, it went, it spoke volumes and there's a lot of real happy neighbors out there. So uh, good, good work, good work by the department, by the public works. Good here. Good to hear. That's all I got on the highway. You want me to go down to fire now? Uh, <laughs> you, we could skip down to fire. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're uh, right. You're yes. Yep. Fire department has answered 24, 25 calls for the month of August. I talked to uh, the assistant chief, Jason Enson. New rescue truck will be in service soon. And that's all we have for that. Right now, I will go to recreation. I've got a lengthy list here. Uh, the concerts we had in uh, Mazir Park. We would like to thank you again to the Southern Duchess Concert Band and the big band sounds. The performance on 821 concert was extremely well attended. Thank you to Jim Finnegan and his lighting crew headed by Jeremy Johnson for additional lighting. If you saw the park lit up at night, I thought it was great. I wish we can get those lights for Christmas. That was able to do a lot of money every Christmas. <laughs> uh, what else we got? We would also like to thank Jessica O'Connor, Charlie Ferry, and Todd Bone for their help and the great social distance folk with Doc for their concerts and Chili Willies for making the side trip from Deer to offer refreshments. And as the mayor spoke once before, the 9-11 Memorial Service is 19th, well, it's not, it's the 19th year of it, of the 9-11 tragedy of, on this Friday evening at 6 p.m. in the Zero Park. So distancing, distancing and masks will be required. Uh, Halloween festival, there will be a Halloween parade in Trunk or Street to be held Saturday, October 24th at noon. Rain date is October 31st. Uh, there is a public meeting will be held on October 20th at 6 p.m. to offer residents and an opportunity to give feedback on plans for our village parks. We will be presenting finalized plans on Bain Park and moving forward on a site plan. We will also be discussing a potential upgrade to our other parks and potential new parks. I don't I don't know where that location is. We don't have I don't have that written down, but I'm assuming maybe Spring Street. Or maybe we can have it outside. I guess, I guess we'll have to have a discussion on it. Yep. And it was, yes, you got some. And the Christmas light parade tree lighting date is Saturday, November 28th. Rain snow date is Sunday, November 29th at 6 p.m. 
and the village's 105th celebration committee. A kickoff meeting will be held on Sunday, November 1st at 2 p.m. All are welcome to participate, but we will be reaching out to many organizations in our village to help plan the year-long celebration. And that's all I have for recreation. Okay. Um, Go to Lake. I'll finish that one up. Yep. Okay. Uh, the Lake, this year, we, I think we did a, a tremendous job out there. The five guys that we have, they were out there a lot. And uh, we hope we kept, maintained the channel to be open down by the Spring Street Dock. You've been down there. It's, it's wide open. It looks, I think it looks great. It looks better than it has in years. And I want to you know, thank the guys that helped us do this, Brian, uh, Jeff, uh, there's two other guys that get their names right up top of my head. <laughs> I can't think of them. Brian can help me if, I, if he hears me. But, Greg and Baron. Baron, yep, yeah, Ed Baron. And so, Greg. Um, and Greg, yep. Yeah. So we, we did a great, I think, we, I think those guys did a great job of doing it. A lot of guys were out there more than others. We all were out there and we all pitched in a hand. We did what we had to do and the machine's still out there working periodically. That's it. That's all I have. Okay, any questions for Kevin? Just just a stupid question about the, the pickup. Once you cut it, are you picking it up? We pick it up and we put it on the, uh, on we, we Kind of like we bulldoze it as far as we can push it, then we pick it up and put it on top of the weed, then it just dies off and floats away. If we can get it to land, we can get it to land. But like if you uh, went down to Spring Street and looked out on the dock, we tried pushing it towards the list road side as far as we could out there where it's right open. And there's land over there, so that's what we tried to do. But it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, Big dent out there. I mean, I haven't seen it like that in years. You know, this time of year in in August. Gotcha. Yeah, the lake the lake does look good this year. I can see a difference from yep. years past, and it's more challenging to get it there because there's more sediment in the lake than uh, there ever has been before. So. But the guys did a great job, so I'd like to thank them again. Yeah, thank them, and and uh, they, they really did a wonderful job. On the um, there was one thing that you said. So the the Bain, the Bain Park the meeting on October twenty first. Uh, twentieth October twentieth. Yeah, so that will not be there will not be a presentation of the final plan. At that meeting, there will be gathering of input for the making of the final plan for the winter for a spring I construction. Um, I was just reading the hat down. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody has the right expectation. Okay, because there's more parts to it than just the corner. So even though there's been one set of um, equipment purchase, there's uh, definitely a lot more to that the five acres of park that sits there. Okay. Okay, on the water side, um, the village has uh, published its notice of intent to apply for the USDA grant in an application uh, to USDA, and that is mainly for the filtration. It also um, has some other items in it, some smaller items, uh, which include some distribution lines as uh, well as some pressure enhancements for increasing the pressure in the village. Uh, the village is also updating its application with Environmental Facilities Corporation through the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, it hopes to be able to uh, get some more funding for um, the uh, work that it needs to do. It's going to be using the remainder of its funding on the um, interconnection with the town of Wappinger. And uh, that's for a 2021 construction that goes into 2022. Um, and 
I think that's okay, but I also would like the to ask the board uh, if we could, uh, so on the sewer side, I'll go to now, the, the, the board is still doing the same thing with the Environmental Facilities Corporation on the Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Uh, it's looking at some additional projects to do at Tri-Municipal um, Sewer Commission. And uh, what it's looking to do is to improve the process at the plant so that it's able to process more sewage in the future and that it'll have a better outflow uh, for its treated uh, outfall that goes into the Hudson River. So, uh, Corey Yusevich, are you able to talk about grants? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. So, you want to give us a report on what's going on with grants? Um, yeah, well, you just brought up the USDA one. So, um, we have 60 days to put that in. I spoke to John Bolger from KC, and we're on schedule for that. So that's going to be submitted probably by the end of this month. Um, we had a urban forestry grant that was only $1,000, but we were going to plant 45 trees at Bain Park for Arbor Day, which was in May, I believe, late May, early April, one of those. Um, that obviously, that got pushed back. So we are doing it now this fall. I just put the order in for the trees today. So they they gave us an extension and that's all, that's fine. The EPA grant, we just sent in our final phase one. Uh, it's for the bleachery. We are already, we already sent in our phase ones for Templefield and Mill Street and Franny Reese, but Franny Reese was deemed clean. So once that's underway, we can start phase two with all these, which is where we actually go in and clean them up. Uh, our DASNY funding, uh, this is for different projects. There's the Franny Reese Park and, and the Boathouse. They uh, finally got back to us about pushing some paperwork forward that was on hold for a bit. So hopefully that can start getting underway a little more. Um, the Boathouse itself is being worked on. I know we've discussed, you, you were discussing the piping before, but um, our architect just went there today at one o'clock to make sure everything was still on our new schedule because obviously COVID uh, extended that project farther than we needed. Um, for Annie Reese is about done, as you said. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, the nine element plan. The nine element plan. We, um, we've still sent in recommendations for that, for recommendations for each municipality to do, and that's going to be incorporated with the water characterization study. And we also, this is sort of nine element plan, sort of on its own thing, but we are currently underway on becoming a climate smart community. Um, we have already signed up to basically pledge to be a climate smart community. And uh, we're going through the process now, me, actually Todd Bowen as well, and someone from Cornell Cooperative Extension to analyze where the village is at right now with different projects and see how, um, like what our score is. Essentially, if you have 120 points, you're a bronze, uh, 170, you're a silver, and 220, you're a gold. Uh, the higher your rank is, the more eligible or the more favorable you are for future grants. So we're counting ours now. We're looking pretty good for just starting off. We're actually either, when it's all tallied up, we're either going to be at or near bronze. So the more we do with that, um, the more favorable grants will be in the future. Um, we applied for a police grant a few months ago. I think it was two months ago. Um, we unfortunately didn't get it. It was a highway traffic safety grant and we were using it to apply to have uh, another officer able to be on the clock 
during vital times in the summer when there's a lot more activity going on outdoors. Um, they unfortunately said that wasn't something uh, they wanted to go into this round. So we unfortunately didn't get that grant. And um, let me think, let me think. I'll just jump in here because uh, it is another thing that's going on with the nine element plan is we are um, putting together our uh, pilot projects and for the pilot projects we're uh, actually uh, this this process was able to get us to a point where um, we're going to try biochar and uh, we're going to try biochar in three different kinds of applications one application is going to be used in a small sewer plant upstream and another application is going to be used in a an area where septic systems are um, filling up uh, a pond with uh, lots of phosphorus and uh, nutrients which are uh, turning this pond green uh, this uh, Pond is actually going over a dam and entering into a tributary which gets into the creek just above the village and uh, has really caused a lot of um, damage, we think, to the lake. Uh, with, and so this is going to be a place where we'll get to uh, test what is coming in to the uh, watershed from these sources from sewer septic, which would be the, the place where the pond is green, and another uh, location way up at the top at the headwaters in Pine Plains where uh, agricultural contamination is getting. Uh, so if, you, if you're not um, familiar, this, this report is going to come out. It's going to say that agricultural uh, use, land use, is one of the, um, one of the top causes of the uh, phosphorus and nitrates and fecal coliform that we have in the, the watershed. Uh, but the purpose of these pilot projects is one, to see if biochar works in those three different kinds of applications. And two, it's also uh, to show, you know, it's, it gives us a chance to measure in these three different uh, locations exactly what is going into the watershed before the biochar and after the biochar. Um, this will be new information that we don't have as much of uh, as much data for. And um, in the case of the place where it's likely septic, uh, we're going to be studying the land use that's around that site. Um, we think that we're going to get some uh, a lot more useful information and the information that we get we think is going to be uh, information that will help us with the three main causes of nutrients in the lake as well as uh, fecal coliform so we're going to be able to see if these um, if these practices will help in those situations. So tomorrow, actually, we're going to be uh, meeting with the engineer and um, a sewer plant upstream to see if uh, this is something that uh, we can install in that sewer plant to see if it makes a difference. Uh, Corey, did you have anything else? Uh, well, I would just also like to bring up, I, I know you briefly brought up uh, the TAP project with Central Hudson, um, but that, uh, what did you say that they, I know they stopped. Um, yeah, just get, they give an update for us what to expect and that we're expecting more information to come. So. Right, okay, so yeah, I, they're, we're, we're still at the moment on pace because we, we made our deadline later than it had to be anyway but so yeah this is is one of those unforeseen circumstances that uh that we planned for so we'll just have to wait and see but no i think it, that's 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 about it okay very good thank you corey are there any questions we're looking into uh the uh zion 
parking lot? Is that still floating out there? We have it is, but it's not like in the next stage, you know, time. I think there's, there's, uh, for one, uh, we should actually announce uh, tonight that uh, we would, and actually, John, I would like you to prepare something for the board for the September 30th meeting, but uh, prepare it in a way that we can send it over to uh, Deborah Magdalene, the um, rector of Zion Church who will be moving back to California uh, after a uh, long and uh, very successful and uh, meaningful uh, years of service here in the village of Wappingers Falls at Zion Church. She's, she's really reached out and done a lot in her time here. Uh, so that is one reason why we will probably wait to see who the new leadership is and what's going to happen there. Are there any uh, any questions about the reports that we gave up to this point from anybody? Uh, so I would also like to, um, there was one thing that should have been on the agenda and it's not. And I would just like to uh, acknowledge and uh, thank two people who have spent decades of their lives working for the good of this municipality. And I would uh, like to get a resolution on behalf of the village board passed in honor of trustee Ronnie Kamornik, who first came on the board in 1985. Yep. That's right. Yep. And you have your picture you can hold up? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> wow. Oh, my. Uh, not even Photoshop. <laughs> and uh, three time Deputy Mayor Scott Davis. Is that right? No, I've been Deputy Mayor 15 times under three different mayors. Okay, three, th three times under, yeah, and 15 terms. All right, that's, that's very impressive. So, um, I'd just like to say, whereas trustees Kamornik and Davis have given the village of Wappingers Falls decades of their lives and faithful service to their community, and whereas their service has been conscientiously and impeccably performed and with the utmost care for the people of the village of Wappingers Falls, and whereas trustees Kamornik and Davis have gone above and beyond the call of duty for the people of the village of Wappingers Falls. And whereas uh, the mayor, the board, appointed officials, village staff, our paid consultants, and all village residents have benefited from and remarked upon their devotion. And whereas their service has not only been performed in a way that shows their care for village residents, but has been instrumental in the successful revitalization of this community. Acknowledging that these efforts of trustees Kamornik and trustee Davis have been performed consistently to the highest standards, which earned them both the highest level of praise and respect from the mayor and the village board of trustees and village residents and having considered the enormity and importance of their contributions to the village board, the village board sees it fit to recognize them both publicly. Therefore, I would ask that it be resolved that the village board hereby bestows a formal resolution of recognition to trustees Kamornik and Davis for their remarkable service to the village of Wappingers Falls. Furthermore, all village residents to whom this resolution is made known should express their gratitude to both Trustee Davis and Trustee Kamornik as pillars of our community and beacons of our shared virtues and values. And furthermore, let it be known forever and evermore that September 16th, the first day that these two will not be trustees for the village of Wappingers Falls in a long, long time, will be forever known and they will forever be joined together as Trustee Kamornik 
and Trustee Davis Day in Wappingers Falls. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. And uh, I love you both. And thank you for all the great thank things you. you've done. I've had a lot of good times with you both. I and just want to say we love the whole board too. And thank you for everything that we've worked so hard for and just keep on going with it. Thank you. Yeah, this place has come so far in, in the 21 years I've been around. We've made some major, major advances and this board should be proud of the work that they've done. Um, I fight with all of you, but I love every one of you. And um, I'm just glad I got to be a part of it. So keep going. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I, I need a motion. Could I get a motion? A motion by I'll make it. Lammers. Uh, I'll take, uh, and then a second from Trustee Huber. Correct. Okay. You might have done it first, but you're you're delayed every time you talk, Kevin. <laughs> all right. So, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you both very much. And I might take you out to lunch on Ronnie Kamornik Day. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you want to join me? Sure. sure. Are you buying? I'm buying. Oh my God. <laughs> Just let me know. I'll be ready for it. Thank you. Ronnie, we thought you were going to buy with all your winnings. Yeah, I'll let you know after tomorrow. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, or th is there anything else uh, for the board before we go into executive session? Okay. Are there any public comments from the public? If you're on YouTube and you want to join in on the Zoom call, you can take this moment to join by going to the Village webpage and clicking on the Zoom link. Okay, you have a little bit more time and uh, so I'm going to be asking somebody to make a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel, the bargaining unit contract and uh, legal matters. I don't see anybody coming on for the meeting and we'll wait 30 more seconds. Could I get that motion? I'll make it. Is there Second. a second? Seconded by Trustee Huber. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll be coming back for a vote after this. So uh, if when we go into executive session, you're gonna join the private room and then you're going to uh, leave the private room, but make sure you come back to the public room so we can make a vote. The board has entered executive session. Please stand by. The meeting will resume when they return. Matt's always late. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay, so we're back from executive session and I would like to uh, read the resolution. The resolution number 352020 of 2020, resolution approving memo of agreement with PBA of Wappingers Falls. Um, whereas the village and the PBA are parties to a collective bargaining agreement covering the period June 1st, 2013 through May 31st, 2018, which has expired 
whereas the parties have engaged in negotiations in good faith in an effort to arrive at a successor agreement to the one that expired on May 31st, 2018, and whereas the parties have arrived at a tentative agreement, and whereas the memorandum of agreement provides that it is subject to ratification approval by the village board and ratification by the PBA membership, and whereas it is recommended that the proposed MOA be ratified and approved by the village board. Now, therefore, we're asking it to be resolved that the 2018-2023 memorandum of agreement between the village and PBA is hereby ratified and approved and be it further resolved that the village mayor and board are hereby authorized and directed to execute the memorandum of agreement in the form annexed hereto, and be it further resolved, the village board hereby approves the funding and directs that compensation be increased in accordance with the MOA, and be it further resolved that the village board hereby directs the village treasurer to calculate the increases in pay that are due in accordance with the MOA and provide a report to the village board of the amounts due and paid. Uh, for that resolution, could I get a motion? I will make a motion that we accept the MOA, that we authorize the MOA, and that we authorize the village treasurer to pay the funding um, mentioned in the MOA to resolve the matter. As, as well as the entire resolution. Correct. 352020 of 2020. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Trustee Kamornik. Okay, and I'm going to do a roll call vote. I will vote aye. And Trustee Huber? Aye. Trustee Markajan is absent. Trustee Kamornik? Aye. Trustee Panessa? Aye. Trustee Davis? Aye. Trustee Lammers? Aye. Okay. Could I get a motion to adjourn? I'll um, make it. Okay. I'll second it. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to take a really long time to vote. Oh, yeah, you would too. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, guys. It was wonderful Thanks. having you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You're a wonderful I'm waiting day. for our dinner. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. 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 Thanks. Good night. Okay, thank you.